Hey guys, it's me Heisenberg here, and today we're going to be taking a look at Elder Blood EMB, which was a requested tutorial by probably about three or four different people, so shout out to the people that requested this. So um, before we get started with the actual installation process, there are some things that I need to say um, to let you guys know about this installation process. Before you even get started following my steps, please go in your game and save somewhere indoors if you're not already saved somewhere indoors because this EMB is very demanding and is very likely to crash if you try and load it up somewhere outdoors. So please make sure that you're loading it up indoors. And then uh, the next thing that I would also like to bring to your attention is that this mod is required to work with further dark dungeons and revamped exterior fog. So all you have to do is download those off of the Nexus links and go ahead and activate those as needed in your mod manager of choice. And um, he also highly recommends using these mods, but they are not required. So yeah, and then uh, the other thing that I wanted to say is that uh, he also mentions that um, mods like Climates of Tamriel, ELFX, Realistic Lighting Overhaul might work, but he doesn't recommend using them with the EMB because, it, because this was designed to work with further dark dungeons. So again, you, you may use weather mods if you want to, but the author does not recommend it. And like I also mentioned at the beginning of this video, this is a very demanding EMB, so you will be losing some frames per second. So um, that's really about all I needed to say before we go ahead and get started with the EMB process. So um, <clears throat> so yeah, once you've go ahead and activated the revamped exterior fog in the further dark dungeons, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to download the 269 binary, which is the newest binary. Let me see if I can find a link. Okay, so we're going to have to go to embdev.com. So... I'll put a link for this in the description. So you're going to get a page that looks like this. So then you're going to go ahead and click News. And then click Download on the side. And then scroll down. And then you're going to click on TES Skyrim. And then you're going to click on the version 0 0.269. And then uh, make sure you scroll all the way to the bottom of the page and click the Download arrow because um, Recently, there's been a lot of ads on this page that, that have like a download button on them, and yeah, those are just ads. So make sure you're clicking the download arrow to start installing the download. And um, you're going to need something that downloads archives in order to install this. Um, I'm going to have links for WinRAR and 7-Zip down in the description. Both programs are free, but I'm using both for the purpose of these videos. So again, go ahead and choose which one that you like if you don't already have an archive program installed. So um, once you get a pop-up like this, I'm going to have you hit backspace on your keyboard and drag and drop your archive on your desktop. And then from there, I'm going to have you right-click on the archive. And if you're using WinRAR, you're going to click this third option right here. And if you use 7-Zip, go ahead and bring down your 7-Zip menu and click the fourth option. And it's going to turn it into a folder, which is what we want. It just makes um, copying and pasting and everything a lot easier. So once you've turned the archive into a folder, you can go ahead and delete the archive. And then we can go back to our internet browser and close out of EMB Dev. And then what we're going to do now is we're going to scroll up to the top of the page and click the Files tab. And under Main Files, you'll see a light version, a quality version, and an ultra version. And... Um, Obviously, the light version is the most performance-friendly version. The quality version is like a medium version. And the ultra version is, you know, like the most extreme version. All three installation processes are the exact same. So whichever process you're deciding to choose, you can still follow my video. So no worries about that. I'm going to be choosing the ultra preset. But um, just make sure that you're choosing the preset that you're... Uh, PC can handle, and then it's going to tell you these mods that you need to have installed. Uh, I'm not sh really sure why it says that you need to have the cloud mod activated, but I don't. it didn't say that on the page. But anyway, go ahead and click continue with my download, and it's going to start downloading as an archive file. And again, click on it, and you'll get a pop-up like this. And just like we did with the binary archive, we're going to hit backspace on our keyboard, 
and drag and drop the archive on our desktop. And again, we're going to be turning this into a folder. So again, right click it. And if you use WinRAR, click this third option right here. If you use 7-Zip, bring down your menu and click the fourth option. And it's going to turn it into a folder. And we can delete the archive once we've extracted it. And what we're going to be doing now is we're going to be locating our Skyrim folder. And for the people that don't know, I show both mod organizer processes and Nexus mod manager processes. So if you use Nexus Mod Manager, an easy way to find your Skyrim folder is bring up Nexus Mod Manager, <clears throat> excuse me, and click this orange folder right here and you're going to get a drop down menu. Click Open Game Folder and it'll take you right to it. So that's how you know you're in the right place. Let me go ahead and get rid of these EMB files. I forgot to do that before the video. Sorry about that guys. Okay, so um, you'll know you're in the correct place when you see Skyrim Launcher and TESV. It may or may not have the .exe at the end. If it doesn't, don't worry about it. If it does, you know, don't worry about it. Just make sure you're not in your data folder where all your mods are. If you use Mod Organizer, um, there's not really going to be a button that you can click on that'll take you right to it that I'm aware of. But down here in this little uh, information toolbar, You'll see it'll tell you what what um, what letter drive it's on, and then programs, Steam, Steam apps, Common, and Skyrim. So it's going to be wherever you installed Steam. So so yeah. So go ahead and bring up your Skyrim folder, and go ahead and open up the 269 binary folder. And you're going to see the injector version, and you're going to see wrapper version. I'm going to be showing you guys how to do the wrapper version installation. I'm going to have a link in the description for injector version installations. But um, 99% of people are going to be doing wrapper version installations anyway. So if you have problems with the wrapper version like crashing or anything, you may need to try the injector version. So I'm going to have a really nice and easy to follow tutorial by a friend of mine that you can click on in the description. Or an annotation in the video that you can click on. But anyways, we're going to be opening up the wrapper version. And the two files that we need out of here are the d3d9.dll file and the embhost.exe file. And we're going to right-click and copy. And then we are going to paste those into our Skyrim folder. And once we've done that, we can go ahead and close out of the 269 binary folder. And then we're going to be opening up the Elderblood folder. And uh, whichever preset you chose, it'll say the, the name of right here. So go ahead and open that up. And you're going to see a couple folders and a whole bunch of files in here. Well, I'm going to have you highlight everything in this folder. And again, right-click and copy. And then paste those into your Skyrim folder. And once you've done that, you can literally close out of the Elderblood folder and delete both of these folders. And once we've done that, we can go ahead and go back to the Elderblood folder and go back to the description page. And I'm going to show you guys the any, the any settings that we have to edit. All right, so Nexus Mod Manager users, I'm going to show you how to get to your any settings. And Mod Organizer users, I'll show you how to get to your any settings. So if you use Nexus Mod Manager, go down to your little start button and you click Documents, and then click My Games, and then Skyrim, and then you'll see Skyrim.any and Skyrimprefs.any. Again, <clears throat> if you don't see the .any there, don't worry about it. It's the same thing either way. And I'm going to recommend that you download a program called Notepad++. There'll be a link for it in the description that you can click on. It's way better than the regular Notepad. But we're going to be focusing on the Skyrim Prefs, so go ahead and edit that. And Nexus Mod Manager users, I'm going to show you a really easy trick to edit your any settings. But first, I'm going to show Mod Organizer users how to edit their settings. So Mod Organizer users, go ahead and open up Mod Organizer. And click this uh, little four puzzle piece thingy right here, and you'll get a drop-down menu. Go ahead and click Any Editor, and you'll get this pop-up right here. You'll see a Skyrim.any tab and a Skyrimprefs.any tab. We're going to be clicking the Skyrim prefs, and you'll get a window that looks like this. Now, Nexus Mod Manager users, an easy way to tweak your settings would be to double-click on the setting, and it's going to highlight it for you. And then you would do Control-C to copy it, 
and then go back to your notepad and do control F to bring up a find menu and then control V to paste it and then click find next and it'll find the setting automatically for you so you don't have to scroll through a fuck ton of settings. So the default for this is going to be zero so make sure you set it to one. Mod organizer users, unfortunately the control F command is not going to work for you or at least it doesn't for me, it might work for you. So you're unfortunately going to have to find the settings manually. But um, B float point render target is not that far from the top. It's under the display, the display brackets. So again, make sure that's set to 1. And then again, we're going to move on to the next setting. So double click, control C, control F, control V. And um, Mine says zero in my notepad because I don't use Nexus Mod Manager, so I'm going to have to do all of my editing and mod organizer, so that's why I'm not changing these, in case anyone was wondering. And um, if you get a pop-up, like when you're doing the find menu, and it says cannot find the text for the setting that you're trying to find, just um, add it manually and then type in the correct setting for the people that were wondering. I always forget to say that, and I get asked that question a lot. So then moving on to the next setting, double click, control C, control F, control V. That one should be right underneath. Control C, control F, control V. Yeah, the B shadows on grass setting is not there by default. So Nexus Mod Manager users, you would do control V and then equals one. But I'm obviously not going to type that there because I'm using Mod Organizer and I already have that setting in there. And then F gamma equals 1.04, so double click, control C, control F, control V. All right, so mod organizer users, once you've tweaked all of your any setting, any Skyrim prefs settings, go ahead and click the save button and then close out. Nexus Mod Manager users, File, Save, or Control S, and then Close Out. And what we're going to be doing now is we're going to be editing our emblocal.ini files, which can be located in our Skyrim folder, where we copied and pasted all the EMB settings. So go ahead and bring up your Skyrim folder, and you should see a folder in here called emblocal, and it may or may not have the .ini at the end of it. Either way, you're good to go. Go ahead and edit that. <clears throat> and the two settings we're going to be focusing on are reserved memory size MB and video memory size MB. Now just the other day, I made a little helpful little note in my description for you guys that you can look at because um, this part can be a little confusing to some people. But um, basically reserved memory size MB, it, uh, I don't really know how to explain the technical term for it, but I just know that it has something to do with your RAM. And I always start, I always start out mine at 256, and it, can, and it can be increased in intervals of 128. Like I just said, there'll be a little diagram for you to follow in the description if you get confused. And then video memory size MB is how much VRAM your system has. And I have 3 gigabytes. So 3072 is the correct number for that. And this number is to be increased in intervals of 1024. But um, I have the, the correct number for 1 gigabyte, 2 gigabyte, 3 and 4 gigabytes in the description. So anything above it, just start out at 4096 and add 1024 to it. Like I said, these two settings can be kind of confusing, so that's why I made a little note for them in the description. So again, video memory size MB is how much VRAM your uh, system has, and reserved memory size MB is a setting having to do with your RAM. So once you've edited those two settings, after checking my little note for them in the description, file and save, and then close out. And then what we're going to do now is we're going to go back to our Skyrim folder, we're going to scroll down a little bit and we're going to open up our Skyrim launcher. This may take a couple seconds for me because I haven't loaded up my launcher at all today, so Steam has to like update and shit. All right, cool. So once you get this um once you get your Skyrim launcher to come up, go ahead and click options. And then uh under anti-aliasing, make sure that's set to off 
and the anisotropic filtering, make sure that's set to off as well. Once you've set both of those settings to off, go ahead and click OK and then click Exit. And um, once we've done that, we can go ahead and run loot and go ahead and go in game. So I'm going to go ahead and get all my plugins all situated. So if you guys had to mess around with your load order, go ahead and run loot or run boss and you should be good to go. Alright guys, so I'll see you in just a second. I'm going to go ahead and load up my game now. Alright guys, so once you've loaded up your game, you should get this pop-up message in your top left-hand corner. If you don't get that message, you did something wrong. And um, you basically get this message because of your binary file. And then you should get a yellow message telling you if you press shift and enter by default, it'll bring up an editor menu. And this is basically called your GUI menu, and you can tweak the EMB however you want through here. And under this little effect tab, you can tweak the EMB through here for performance reasons and stuff like that. So this is a cool little feature, and then shift enter to get out of it. And then if you press the star key on your number pad, it'll bring up a little FPS counter in your top left hand corner for the people that don't have an FPS counter. So that's a cool little feature for people that don't have one. And then the star key on your number pad to disable it. So I'm going to go ahead and load up my game now just so you guys can see what this EMB looks like. Alright guys, so once you've loaded up your game, you should be able to immediately tell that the EMB is working correctly. So if you walk around for a minute, um, I'm going to show you guys a little trick to turn the EMB off. So if you wanted to turn the EMB off for just performance reasons, or if you wanted to compare the EMB to Vanilla Skyrim, you can just press Shift and F12, and it'll turn, it'll turn uh, Vanilla Skyrim back on, and then Shift F12 to turn the EMB back on. And um, I'm using the Ultra preset, and I'm getting about anywhere between 30 and 40 frames per second, which honestly isn't that bad, especially since I'm recording. But um, like I said, I chose the Ultra preset, and um, it's really not that bad. But um, yeah, guys, this is one of my favorite EMBs. I've always really appreciated this EMB. Oh yeah, one thing I forgot to mention. You're going to have to edit your in-game brightness. So bring up your little uh, save menu and go to settings. And then go to display. And then he says he recommends that you turn yours three-fourths of the way up. So once you've done that, exit out. And apparently this is what it should look like. Again, I love the way this EMB looks. It's absolutely beautiful. Um, but yeah, guys, like I said at the beginning of the video, this was a requested tutorial. And, um, yeah, I really enjoy doing, um, requested tutorials for you guys. So, um, like I mentioned in my, in all my videos, if you guys have a requested tutorial that you would like me to do, all you have to do is send me a message or leave me a comment and I'll, and I'll get to the video as soon as I can. So, um, I'm going to go ahead and end this video here. I hope this tutorial was easy enough for you to understand. I, um, <clears throat> I changed the way I did things a little bit, especially with the, um, the EMB local settings down in the description because uh, people were getting confused about that so I thought I would just add a little uh, helper uh, thingy for it like a helper dialogue for it in the description so like I mentioned about five other times if you get confused on that part there's a little note about that in the description so um yeah guys I'm gonna go ahead and end the video here and uh like I said, I hope this video was easy enough for you to follow, and I hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you guys in the next one.